Hi, I'm Seidai Tamura, an artist from Reno, Nevada, originally from Tokyo, Japan. Welcome to my channel. This is my very first inaugural video published in YouTube. My intention is to show my general process of painting. I never really thought about making a video about my art until recently when I acquired a smartphone for the first time in my life. Yes, a smartphone has a video function, and I thought it would be fun to capture my process in a moving footage with audio and music. Like I said, this is my very first time, so my editing skills are not that great, and video quality is as far as the level of my Galaxy J3 Achieve is capable of doing. Cut me some slack if you will. I hope the information that I'm sharing would help all those beginning painters out there hungry for the knowledge. Right now, you're looking at my completed preliminary drawing for a painting entitled American Venus from Bygone Era. It's going to be painted with oil paints on a masonite board. When it comes to executing successful representational painting, a drawing is the most important and crucial part of the entire process. I really wish to start off the video with the drawing process, but unfortunately I didn't record that part. I didn't think of making a process video until I was halfway into the underpainting stage. If there is any interest, I might make a drawing video in the future. So after this introduction, you'll see series of still images of underpainting progression. Then it'll switch over to uh, video footage, picking up where it left off. Okay, let's get started. So how do we start a painting? How do we actually lay a first stroke of paint on a virgin white canvas? Well, sometimes I do a painting on the toned surface, which is much less intimidating. But to do a painting on the stark white canvas like this one is pretty challenging. So a general rule of thumb that I've learned from attending Tony Ryder's workshop years ago was to start painting dark to light. Oh, by the way, Tony Ryder, for those of you who may not know, is one of the leading contemporary realist painters in practice today. I'll talk about Tony Ryder a little further in the later segment. So why start a painting from dark to light? My understanding is that finding the darkest part of your painting is easier than finding a value of middle value or a value in the of highlight. So that's exactly what you're seeing right now. I'm painting the darkest part of this drapery here and eventually progress to the lightest area of the fabric. So with that being said, and you're watching my process video here, and probably wondering why I'm doing against what I preach. If you can recall earlier still images of my underpainting, I've started to paint figure first. But if I were to follow the rule, I should have started to paint the background drape first, because that's the darkest value of this painting. I often break rules like that, even though that it might cause some redundancy of the process. Painting a figure is the part that drives me, and why I started this piece in the first place. And if I don't get that started in the right direction first, it would affect my motivation to finish the painting. Anyway, the purpose of underpainting is recognizing different values, relationships of different values to one another, and its first attempt to establish them. You see, even if you try your best, your very first estimation of values will be off, but the underpainting process will provide you a sort of a foothold for understanding how all the values in the painting are placed. Underpainting is done with diluted oil paints with lots of paint thinner such as turpenoid. It's done that way because you're not sure how dark or light the values you're trying to replicate. So instead of using thick gloves of paint for this guessing work, it's easier and manageable to use thin diluted paints. Okay, for the interest of time, I'll now fast forward the process in a time lapse.
Here's the completed underpainting. Now I have a foundation to start the next stage of the process called form painting. As you can see, now that I've established major basic value placement of the painting, I have a better clue of how dark and light things are. With that added confidence, I can now lay a much thicker paint to render objects in a more three-dimensional way. In the next video, I'll show you a process of form painting over this completed underpainting. Thank you for watching.